All right. This one is called Shueisha vows to destroy Dragon Ball over money even after Akira Toriyama's passing. Akira Toriyama obviously being the author of Dragon Ball series. Shueisha is vowing to destroy it? Let's see just how messed up this is going to be. I am really upset right now. Like, they're just, this is, this is gross. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I am really upset right now. Like, they're just, this is, this is gross stuff right here. Like, they're a bunch of vultures. It hasn't even been a year since Akira Toriyama's passing, and you already see companies like Shueisha just dining in on the, the legacy of Dragon Ball and what Akira Toriyama left behind. So, like, is it almost like, like, when people, okay, when, like, a rich grandparent dies, right? There's gonna be like a will, and then like the siblings are gonna be like fighting over like vultures. But if Akira Toriyama dies, the IP surrounding Dragon Ball, what are they trying to do right now? This is just so freaking gross, man. This stuff came out earlier this morning. It was translated by this individual right here. You okay. know, he has a bunch of, you know, posts. He's been talking about Dragon Ball Daima and all that. And basically, he went out of his way to translate this important article about the future of Dragon Ball. And What's so, going on? bringing up what this article says, I want to read it. But to summarize first, pretty much Dragon Ball's overall future is in shadow right now because it's like we know Dragon Ball Daima is coming up in October of this year I did not know I don't even know what a Dragon Ball Daima is but after that we don't really know because with the rights of the series being battled back and forth between different companies at this point in time we don't really know what will happen to Dragon Ball. For all we know, this legitimately could be the end of the Dragon Ball that we know and love, and it will pass into the hands of a, just a greedy corporation that just wants to pump out so much stuff because they just want to make money instead Got of actually, it. you know, you know, honoring the legacy of Akira Toriyama. Did Akira Toriyama say no more Dragon Ball? Like, once I die, I don't want anyone to take my IP and produce even more content. It should just end as is. Therefore... Shueisha taking the IP and pumping out Dragon Ball Daima is somehow shitting on his legacy? What, what, what is the bad thing here? The offer of the series that passed away. And just when I read this article, it really boiled my blood because I want you to see this real okay. quick. Okay. So this right here is a little tidbit in this, okay? It's like down here, as you can see. And I'll read the whole thing. I'll go over it. But like this little bit just showcases really the, the position Shueisha is in and what has led to this dispute between the two groups, the companies fighting each other for the rights of Dragon Ball. So to give some context here, okay? Basically, the article highlights that um, before Akira Toriyama's death, Back in 2022, there was a falling out of sorts with Ioku. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Ioku, Ioku? as an individual, was someone that's always been kind of like the, um the main front and center person that has presented Dragon Ball to the world. Okay. Basically, he's been the head of the Dragon Ball room. He literally says it right here. Basically, Mr. Ioku is like the ambassador that speaks on behalf of Dragon Ball, okay? Here, you can literally see it right here. He's been the head of the Dragon Ball room in 2016 after serving as editor-in-chief in, in V-Jump. Basically, he's been the one that has been the front and center main head honcho leading the charge for the works of Dragon Ball for a very long time in terms of, like, you know, getting anime, etc., from my understanding. And and so basically back in 2022, which is this little part right here, Shueisha basically was very upset with Yoku because without consulting his superiors, he basically decided to make a film adaptation of Akira Toriyama's series Sandland. And I feel like everybody at this point has hold heard on, about hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Shueisha, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Decided to make a film adaptation of Akira So Mr. Yoku is going rogue without consulting his superiors. Yoku just decided to make a film of the Toriyama Sensei Sandland. Okay. So this is kind of like disrespectful, I guess, to, you know, people that actually own, I don't know, the IP. Kira Toriyama's series Sandland. And I feel like everybody at this point has heard about the series Sandland. It was a okay. series that came out very recently on Netflix, I believe. I personally have yet to watch it. I really should watch it. But the point of the matter is, is that it was a work of Akira Toriyama that finally got, you know, put into an anime adaptation. And okay. apparently, Yoku, you know, the one that's basically the front and center for Dragon Ball for a long time now, that Akira Toriyama even liked himself, you know, was the one that pressed it to happen. He went out of his way, not really consulting with his superiors, etc., and he made it happen. And basically, okay. thanks to that, he faced a lot of criticism and backlash from anime production companies. I'm not sure if this is like a good thing or a bad thing. Isn't it kind of good to get Toriyama's work on anime display? But if he did it without 
consent, I guess, then it's kind of disrespectful that you go behind the backs of people to do it. As you can see here, TV networks that had condescending, they say that he had a condescending attitude, trying to, you know, like mud his character, so to speak. And then they were also very upset that, you know, he lacked collaborations with the metaverse and AI that the higher ups were anticipating. And just uh, like, okay. when you see a statement like this, that the companies like Shueisha and these TV production companies and all that are very upset because Yoku went around them and instead of incorporating AI and metaverse and, you know, trying. I, I mean, the whole story hasn't been said yet, but so far it makes me feel like Ioku is doing the fans a service because it sounds like the higher ups wanted what, whatever the fuck meta. How, what the fuck is metaverse and AI gonna do to do with like Dragon Ball or, or sorry, Sandland? It sounds like Ioku said, nah, fuck that shit. I don't want to just put in buzzword, you know, tech in this series. I want to give the move, the series like what it deserves, the OG source, and he put it out there. And now he's getting blasted by Shueisha, it seems like. To follow through with their regulations, he decided to uphold the traditions of Akira Toriyama. You know for a fact who's potentially on the right side. Now, I'm not saying Yoku is completely right for not consulting the right avenues and talking with people. But it's very clear after this move, you know, there was a divide between Shueisha and Yoku. Got it. And so with that divide that happened with him going around, you know, the procedures and not consulting his superiors, it caused a shift, like a, a rupture between the two companies, like for instance, Yoku and Shueisha and others, and it caused him to basically have to step down and all that as the spokesperson. And so because okay. of that, he decided to form his own independent company and he called it like Capsule Corporation Tokyo. And <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. Like, Capsule Corporation, like, you know, the whole theme of capsules in Dragon Ball, right? It's on brand. As you can see here, literally, Akira Toriyama is cited that he was also dissatisfied with Yoku being removed yeah. as the, uh, as he trusted him the most. So, basically, Akira Toriyama even endorsed Yoku as, like, the person he trusts the most with his work Got in it? terms of being a spokesperson for Dragon Ball. And so, thanks to the rift, Yoku made his own company to basically Capsule now Corp? be able to handle, you know, Dragon Ball without the influence of Shueisha, without Shueisha really pushing back against him. It's just, there was a huge divide that made. So, kind of fast forwarding to what we know now, pretty much we have it to where thanks to that old whole divide that happened like in, you know, 2020s, like, you know, 2022, etc., you have a door now with Akira Toriyama's passing. They're now fighting. The two businesses are fighting for who will carry on the legacy of Dragon Ball. Will she, uh, Shueisha? Fuck Shueisha. Capsule Corp. The man is literally, like, inherited the will of Akira Toriyama. The man is literally acknowledged by him, probably coached by him to, like, take over. Who am I gonna side with? A person that was directly involved with the author of the series? Or this greedy ass corp. Like, obviously, Capsule, we're going to decide with the, uh, what's his name? Ioku, right? Gain all the rights. Will, you know, Capsule Corporation Tokyo that Yoku has gain all the rights? Or, you know, will it, they both share a certain percentage? But the point of the matter is, is that what. It's very clear from what Shueisha has even outlined in this article alone that they care more about money and optics and how they're viewed and of using course. AI, etc. than actually the legacy of Dragon Ball. And I yeah, that statement of like, it was lacking in collaborations with the metaverse and AI that the higher ups were anticipating. I don't know. Something about that just like feels like these boomers don't even know what the fuck metaverse and AI is and how that would even like implemented into anime itself but i i'm all with ioku man i know at the end of the day shueisha is a company i know that they have to make money that is the truth okay i know people don't want to hear that sometimes but that is the truth but at the same time this offer is so legendary he is such a legendary figure within manga culture itself not just even manga culture but way beyond manga culture the fact that they couldn't even wait a year to really just dismantle the stuff he's built in like like, the body's still warm, bro. Shueisha, I don't know. They're probably like, give it one year to the fucking T. And then we scavenge them for all they got. Like, I get it. It's business at the end of the day. But, like, damn. This, this looks so bad on their brand. Because, like, the masses... Every, well, not every Dragon Ball fan is going to know who Ioku is. I, I, I bet the casual person is not going to understand even the divide between, like, Shueisha and Capsule Corp. But this looks pretty bad on them. But I guess Shueisha is that ballsy that they're like, yeah, we can get away with this.
like ruin his legacy to some degree thanks to just greed for money it is so gross to me man it just they really are just straight up vultures now i'm not saying i, I want to make sure this is fundamentally clear i know i'm painting this video as ioku is completely in the right but there is definitely some things I disagree with. I do think that him going around, you know, Shueisha, not consulting superiors, etc. is mm. not the right way to do a business. It's yeah, but the reason that he didn't consult the higher-ups and not to include collaborations such as AI and Metaverse, he probably was right about that, right? In terms of business, that's probably not the right thing to do, right? You need to follow a standard set of procedures. But him going out of the way, almost being vigilante-esque, to make sure that Sandland was going to get the proper representation that it deserves, rather than getting all this bullshit, you know, tech jargon. Uh, I'm willing to kind of like turn a blind eye to that. It's not. There is a hierarchy of command that does make sense. Even though it is thanks to him going around them while we got even Sandland to begin with, I do think that, you know, there is an order to things, and I can understand why there would be some friction between companies if he did that. But it does not change the fact, though. Apparently, they were upset with him because he usually kept in mind Akira Toriyama's visions and what he wanted above else for the good or the bad, according to Shueisha, and they didn't like that. So basically, Ioku is always for Akira Toriyama, and he always would do what Akira Toriyama wanted, even if Shueisha did not want it. And Based. so, that is where, once again, more friction comes in. Like I said, there is an order of things. I do think he's at fault to some degree, but I do think that it's very clear, looking at the two individuals, which one cares more about the product, which... Exactly, right? This whole statement is obviously worded in such a way to make Ioku look bad, so that Shueisha can obviously be like, you know, this guy is a liability, this guy is, you know, he's volatile, he shouldn't have, you know, control over or, or even work on, you know, Toriyama's projects because of this. But at the end of the day, like, what really happened? The guy wanted Toriyama's work to shine through to the core of what it represents without these higher-ups trying to, you know, muddy the fucking series with whatever bullshit tech that they were trying to add to. So even if he broke the rules and didn't, you know, abide by the routine, like the standard set of procedures, again, I'm totally willing to overlook it because I know this guy meant good right he meant to like make sandland be what it's supposed to be what akira toriyama you know envisioned which one cares more about dragon ball at this point in time at least until more information comes out it looks like ioku loves dragon ball way more than shueisha does they just they want to make bank off of it yep. and i mean even this basically right now is ioku loves dragon ball but shueisha loves the money that dragon ball makes even more than dragon ball article kind of highlights that at the beginning of the article they talk about the cells and the movies and stuff like right here you literally see where like uh with Doken battle and all that it has worldwide total revenue of 5 billion yen by february 24 and then the movie dragon ball super superhero released in 2022 is had a box office revenue of 13 billion yen as well That's so it's lot. just like it's very clear that Dragon Ball is very lucrative, it has a lot of money, it prints money, and it only continues to grow even after the passing of Akira Toriyama. And so these companies are, like I said, are feasting on the, the remains of the mm. series and what Akira left behind just to get money, more money, etc. So yeah, uh, this is insane, because the future of Dragon Ball is really unclear at this point in time, because let's, uh, let's talk about some things of what if, for instance, like what could theoretically happen here if, uh, let's just say Ioku does get the rights, and this is, this is not necessarily a good thing either. So, I was, you know, talking with a few people on social media, and they mentioned to me, because I'm no lawyer, I don't know all the laws, etc., what happens in legal battles. Who owns the rights? But someone pointed out, like, hypothetically, if Ioku was to completely win, the, you know, like, the battle between the rights of Dragon Ball and all that, he would definitely be able to make anime, make manga, etc., of Dragon Ball merchandise, etc., but cool. the problem would be is that he would probably not have the rights to actually Dragon Ball Super. So, for instance, the current manga that is being written in... So, like, obviously there's OG Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. GT, I don't think, is canon, right? And then there's Super, but all the stuff before Super... Ioku would have rights, but no matter what, Super and Beyond, which is the current Dragon Ball content, Shueisha has. That's what we're getting into? In Jump, like for instance, in the magazine, 
Ioku and his company would not have rights to that. That would mean okay. that the entire script of Dragon Ball would just have to be completely thrown to the wind and start from scratch after Battle of Gods, and maybe even prior to that. So you you could clearly see where the problem comes in legally. If Ioku wins and he doesn't technically get those rights to the actual magazine manga, it would have to be an entirely new story. That means that Ultra Instinct would have to be scrapped. It would mean that like Ultra Ego would have Holy to be scrapped. And different characters like you know Goku Black to Jiren. I haven't, like, watched Dragon Ball Super, but I do know of things like Ultra Instinct and stuff like that. It's so popular, but, like, huh. We're at a crossroads where it's, like, Yoku wins? Well, all the stuff has to get retconned now. You need to have different things. Maybe they'll just, like, rename it. Instead of Ultra Instinct, it's gonna be, like, Hyper Instinct or some shit. But this is an interesting situation because Shueisha is not gonna hand over those rights. So, this is potentially looking like a pretty bad thing, even if Yoku wins. And to everything that we've seen in Super, so to speak, would potentially have to be scrapped, because obviously they would not own the rights to it, because, you know, Shueisha would own the original manga, so to speak. So you can see where the difficulties come in. Mm. So, it's just, it's really bad, it's a messy situation that clearly has no regard for the community and the fan base that Akira Toriyama has obviously, you know, cultivated for decades at this point. And it's just like, this is what companies do, they showcase complete disregard for the love of a work. It's just all about money. Just because they want to gain a few extra you know, million dollars, for, so to speak. I mean, obviously way more than that, but I mean, it's just, it's just so sad that this is kind of a legacy of Dragon Ball that's happening here, is that uh, we're getting to see just these companies fighting over the rights, and regardless of who wins, even if Yoku wins, it's not going to necessarily be good, because obviously is probably going to have the rights to the original manga, and the current writer of you know, the manga of Dragon Ball Super is an employee at Shueisha, so I doubt they're that's a wrap, right? Like, what are you gonna do? The main mangaka is literally, like, owned by Shueisha. So what? Ioku wins, but Capsule Corp doesn't have the mangaka. Nor now, and then they have to rewrite everything. So, like, Ioku potentially winning. Like, I want to side with Capsule Corp because they represent Toriyama's vision and they care about Dragon Ball more. But with the way that things stand right now regarding who owns shit, Shueisha's... Shueisha's ownership makes this so messy, and the mangaka owns Shueisha, so the Dragon Ball Super that everyone loves right now, those fan base, they're gonna get mad. They probably don't even know anything about this. They just care about the existing story that's been, they've been keeping up with, and if suddenly Shueisha loses, then all of that gets scrapped, and those fans will get upset and mad. And I don't have faith that we're going to be able to, Capsule Quirk is going to necessarily be able to rewrite all that shit. Like, for example, Ultra Instinct, right? The Battle of God, like, whatever happens after that. That sounds like such iconic things that like you can't just, like, act like it never happened for the sake of copyright ownership. So, even though I want Capsule Corp to win, it's a fucked up situation where, for the success of Dragon Ball Super and to make those fans happy, maybe it's better for Shueisha to win. I, I don't know. This is tricky they're gonna step away to work with Capsule Corporation Tokyo, so it's just, yeah, you, get, you, you can see the mess, it's, it, it's very messy, ah, uh, man, well, Dragon Ball fans, it is what it is, not good, man, it's not good, I'm gonna leave it at that, you all be safe, Chibi. now, guys, go give Chibi a like on the video, that was a pretty informative video, I had no idea about anything about this happening with Dragon Ball, because, like, I'm a normie, and most people watching Dragon Ball are probably normies too. That has no clue about the industry and things like that. So, again, it's just like, Ioku should win. I think that he cares about Dragon Ball more. Because he has the vision that Akira Toriyama had. But the fact that the main mangaka is Shueisha. And because Shueisha also has ownership after Battle of Gods. For the sake of Dragon Ball Super as it exists now and their fan base. It's probably in their best interest to keep it Shueisha. Can't Capsule Corp just like, buy the mangaka back though? I'm not exactly sure how that works, but Shueisha's probably gonna win. Like, it sucks, it sucks, it's kind of doomer, but Shueisha, they're just too big, right? They're probably gonna win. I don't know. Sucks overall.